I would like the kids to come forward for a children's chat about my hat. A chat about my hat. You see the hat I've got here? You know what that says on there? No. What does it say? Navy. Joel? Navy. Now, why do you suppose I would have a hat that says Navy on it, Miles? What was that? I was in the Navy. Okay. I know you only see me as an old white-haired pudgy guy <laughs> that meets with you once in a while to tell you a story. But I wasn't always white-haired, at least. Okay? Could I put the first picture up so that you can kind of see who I was? Now, which one of those three guys do you suppose was me? Well, it's the one with my hand on my hip like this. See? I wasn't gray. I was handsome. <laughs> Those are my buddies. Steve, he was one of my groomsmen in my wedding. And the other one is Jack Howell. And we were on board the USS Lexington. It was a big aircraft carrier. It's now a museum in Corpus Christi. Could I have the next one, please? The other ship I was on was called the Savannah. And this is a picture of me, which is right there in the middle at the back. Not gray, not pudgy. And the guy just below me, his name is Mike Taylor. Mike Taylor. Could I have the next one, please? Now that's the Savannah. You know that big ship? See all the big posts, the big arms that stick out? The Savannah was a ship that was like a floating Kmart or Walmart. Uh, as ships would come up to us, aircraft carriers, destroyers, cruisers, they'd pull up alongside. They would be cruising along 15 miles an hour. And we would shoot cables over to them, and then we would supply them with anything they needed. We'd fill up their gas tanks. We'd provide them for fuel for their jet aircraft. We'd provide them frozen meats for the next several weeks, fruit and vegetables. We just took care of everything. Once in a while, we brought the mail. We'd send the mail over to them, and once in a while we'd have to bring somebody back that wasn't feeling good, and we'd put them in a chair, a boatswain's chair, and bring them back over from their ship over to ours so we could take them so they can get medical treatment. No, it was just all kinds of stuff. So that ship right there was brand new. It hadn't traveled one mile. It was still sitting on the dock, brand spanking new. And here's the story. I was given a job back in 1970 to teach a brand new crew about a brand new ship. Now they didn't come with instruction manuals. There was just this tangle. If you went into the engine room, there was this tangle of pipes all oh, this way, wires and valves and stuff going every direction just all through that big room. And the engines were in there, and the generators for the electricity were in there, and the fire pumps were in there. Everything was in there. But how did it work? Well, nobody knew. So I had to teach him. So here's what we did, all right? I made every single man on our crew, we had to have enough people to run 24 hours a day, seven days a week, continuously. So every single person on the crew had to know everything about that ship and what it made it work. So this happens to be a picture that was in my little notebook. It talks about the 600 pound steam system. Um, you ever see uh, steam come off of a hot kettle of water in your mom's kitchen? You ever seen that steam come off there? Well, that's at 212 degrees. This steam was at 489 degrees, almost 500 degrees, and at 600 pounds of pressure. If you open the wrong valve at the wrong time, you know what happens? Bad things happen. Bad things happen. I've seen a guy close a valve he wasn't supposed to, and this beautiful, functioning, 100% wonderful ship, this great machine, all of a sudden went dark. He turned off the valve that made the steam go to the generators that ran the electricity. And all of a sudden we were sitting there looking at each other in the dark going, 
this isn't good. This isn't good. And it wasn't good. <clears throat> I could tell you more about what happened, but that's not here, not here. Every system within the ship, there must have been 12 systems, condensate systems, uh, vacuum systems, uh, salt water systems, cooling systems, electrical systems, the fire pumps, they all ran from that room. And they all needed to know. You know what happens if something happens that's bad? And you're out in the middle of the ocean, you're a thousand miles from anything, and all of a sudden you find yourself dark and cold and not moving out there in the middle of the ocean. You know what they say? Fix something! Get us going again! Do something! And so I worked and I worked and I worked. And everybody had to make their own diagram. Every valve had a number. Every valve, every pipe had its ID. Everything had to be completely organized. And we'd train. And we'd say, okay, now this valve is shut down. What are you going to do? And they'd have to work through a way to cross-connect and make things happen. Because they had to know everything about that ship to make it work. In order to be well prepared for anything that happened. Now, I went off the ship just about the time it was ready to sail. My job was done. Forty years later, 40 years later, Mike Taylor wrote to me on Facebook. He said, I saw your picture on the, <laughs> on the Facebook, and I recognized you as the guy who taught us about that ship. And I just want to say thank you, because what you told us was very, very important to us. Now, he didn't tell me what all went bad <laughs> that caused him to think that how important my lessons were. But now that's 40 years ago. Do you realize that really wasn't the most important job I ever had? I'm still a teacher. But you know how I'm preparing people now? I'm telling people how to live for Jesus Christ. I am trying to show every single person exactly what it takes. Every nuance, every little change, every possibility of what it means to live for Jesus their whole lives. And as important as that work was 40 years ago now more than 40 years ago. This is more important. What we're doing today is so important, your very life depends on what we're teaching here. Not just me, but in the junior church, the Sunday school program, everything is designed to help you understand how God loves you and how he wants to live with you every minute of your lives. And so in order to be well prepared, Focus very carefully. Listen. Study. Make notes like we had the guys make notes back years ago. Take whatever steps you need to to hold that deep in your heart. Memorize the verses. Understand the lessons. If you have questions, don't stop asking questions until you understand. God's going to give you the chance so that you won't be stuck a thousand miles from no place dead in the water, dark and cold, and all alone. He will help you to stay in exactly where you needed to be with exactly the help you need. Because we have a word of prayer together. Would you join me? Dear Jesus, you said you'd never leave us and abandon us. You said you'd never turn aside from us. You said you would always be right there with us. Sometimes that's a little hard to picture because we can't see you standing next to us. It's sort of like our eyes don't work good enough. So we have to depend on our heart eyes to see you. We have to look at our faith eyes to see you standing right next to us. But if we listen to you and we want you and we hunger and we thirst for you, you will come and whisper to us. You will show us what we need to know. 
and you will give us that chance to say, oh, those lessons that we learned in the Breakpoint Church were so, so very important to us. Thank you so much for all the people who shared and loved and taught us and encouraged us and prayed with us and showed us what it was like to live for Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for loving us, and thank you for loving these kids, and we thank you that you're going to take care of us every step of the way because we're living for you. Amen. Amen. Thank you. You can go back and be seated.